Now, I feel that it's important to tell you about some of the very, very subtle but important differences between the Windows NTFS file system and Linux's file system as well. So let me uh, share this with you. If I go inside of Windows and I create a directory, I'm at the command prompt as you can see, I'm very comfortable here. Um, well, I would encourage you to start using it too. <laughs> so I'm going to create a directory called docs. Now here's the thing, when I create a directory called docs, if I spell it in uppercase, it still goes there. If I create a file here, and I'm going to create a file using CopyCon, maybe you've never even heard of it. CopyCon is a very, very st uh, straight utility at the command line, newfile.txt. This is a text file. All right, this creates a file called uh, a text file. Now notice something. In this text file, I typed it with the capital F, and I, I mean, I created it with the capital F, and I uh, displayed it with the lowercase f. When I do a dir, it shows it to me with the capital F, the way I typed it. And what I'm trying to say here is that Windows is case insensitive. It doesn't care what the, um, here's my docs directory. See it? New file. And there's a text that I typed in. So Windows doesn't care uh, what the case of the file is. As a matter of fact, if I try to create the same file twice, if I said copycon new file .txt with the lowercase f, it will tell me that, hey, do you want to, I don't know why I'm doing this. It will tell me, hey, you want to overwrite this file? Right, because it doesn't understand that there's a capital F here and I'm putting in a lower F here. So it's not the same thing. Let me take you to Linux and show you something similar. If I do make dir docs with a lowercase d, and it goes into the docs directory. However, if I do a cd docs, it'll say there's no such file or directory because uppercase and lowercase makes a difference. Also, if I create a file, touch new file, with a capital F, and then I do t create a new file with a lowercase f. Both files get created because these two files are not the same. One has a lowercase f and one has an uppercase f. Right? This is something that can get confusing for the Windows user. And Windows um, admins are usually uh, uh, not used to file systems being case sensitive. They may be used to databases or other applications or passwords being case sensitive, but not the file system. And as a matter of fact, if a Windows administrator who wasn't aware of this looked at this particular directory structure right now and saw two files called newfile.txt not paying attention to the upper and lower case, they would start to think there may be something wrong or that they would need to investigate what's going on. So uppercase and lowercase make a difference. There's also something I want to tell you that is um, some of the utilities here that I really like. Let me remove this, um, these files here. Um, and I'm going to do touch users 1, txt, touch users 2 txt nano users 1.txt John Adams, Jane Doe, Alex Jordan, Tom Cruise, um, Rich White. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And I'm going to do nano users 2, Tom Cruise. Jane Doe, John Adams, George Washington, Alex White. Um, save this. And I'm going to do diff w users 1.txt users 2.txt users 2.txt. There you go. And what it does here is it compares the two files. And it tells me the differences between the two files. All right. It tells me that in the first, this is the first file, and it tells me what's going on in here and the differences between the two. I've got Alex White in one, and I've got uh, Rich White in the other one, that there are no 
as you can see. Uh, this left arrow tells me the differences in the first file, and the greater than sign tells me that these particular, these particular people don't exist in the other one. So uh, diff is a really, really great utility. I can also show you something interesting here. If I display this file, users1.txt, it just displays them. However, I can do this. I can say sort users1.txt, and as you can see, it sorts it in alphabetical order, starting with this first column here, A's, then J's, then R, then T. I can also choose to sort it in reverse order, starting with T going down to A. Once I sort it in this manner, I can put in a greater than sign and say sorted users.txt. And here I've got a file called sorted users.txt and let me display it. If I display the sorted users.txt, sorted users.txt, it will display me the users in sorted order because I put in that greater than pipe. And this greater than will basically output the result of this file over to the sorted users. Uh, file, uh, which is actually kind of uh, interesting. I can also show you one other thing that I think you will find um, a little bit of a benefit. I can create a zip file and call it gzip users1, users1.txt. <clears throat> and here's a gzip file, users1.txt gz, right? So if I, uh, it basically zips that file up, right? Very, very simple tool. So I just wanted to show you a couple of those features and a little bit around the file system and the fact that the file system is case sensitive. Be very careful when you're getting around the file system. Hopefully you're getting a little more comfortable with this.